morning, church. Thank you for, for having me here after one year. I have a laptop here because if people can see it online, it's nice if it goes, <laughs> if they see what I'm talking about. Um, and if you still want to see it, of course, you can still look online afterwards. Uh, maybe I can ask Jan to include it maybe in an email so that you can uh, see the pictures because I think it's nice if I talk about Malawi and if I talk about our work that you can really see what we are doing. Um, it becomes more alive and real. First of all, I want to uh, start with a family update. We left here one year ago, and we were sad to leave this church, but we were looking forward to follow God's voice and to follow him because he called us to Malawi. And we're just thinking about it, leaders, wherever you call me. Um, we are doing all very fine. Um, we are settled in Malawi. The kids love Malawi. It makes it for us as parents also a little bit more easy. Um, me, myself, I left with a lot of uh, health problems, as most of you may remember. But uh, I can say that when God calls you, he tests your faith. Maybe you shouldn't go because, look, you have back pain, you have this, you have that. But God has provided. And this year, I can praise God that it didn't disturb my work at all. And that's God. He does it and doesn't go without fight. Huh? That's what we are promised as well, that we can expect that. But we are all fine. Um, Joa goes to an international school and he loves it at school. Shepard is going to join as well, going to school in September. He really loves it. So we love the nature. We live in the mountains around 1,000 meters high and it's amazing. Joa, we were, we were at the moment staying in uh, Pastor Zeke and Rebecca's house. And he saw something jumping in the garden. He said, oh, mama, look, a monkey. I said, my dear, I'm Belgium. We don't have monkeys in our garden. <laughs> so <laughs> it is really settled there. Um, I want to talk a little bit also about, yeah, we have been away for a year. What have we achieved? I will just go through it shortly. And I hope that you can see the pictures later because it's beautiful to see. Uh, first of all, we have uh, been able to drill three boreholes in Pulaya. So people, they were drinking from dirty wells. And now uh, people are very happy, very excited. They were dancing and singing for joy that finally there is clean water after. Some people were 60 years old and they have never drank any glass of clean drinking water in their lives. It's amazing that we could make that change. So that's beautiful. On the field of uh, part of education, that's another pro project we are running. We have like three groups, the nursery, we have primary school and secondary school. Um, during the COVID-19 lockdown in Malawi, there was no education and it was for seven months. And then we arrived in Malawi and then they opened the schools. But then there came a second lockdown and we were like, these kids are, uh, the, the teenagers were getting pregnant. Um, there came a lot of uh, rude behavior in the children. Some children were just, they didn't know what to do with themselves. There is nothing like here you can go maybe to a playground or you can go to the forest or you can go there, but these kids are stuck at home. So we provided some education from nursery till secondary school in all different programs. And it was amazing to see how, how they were cooperating and how we motivated them to go to school. And even some children, they returned back to school uh, after this because many kids did not go back after the first lockdown. So it was amazing to see that. Um, we have also set up a field office in Pulaya. There's a small nursery school which was already there. Um, we have one small room in the inside of that, so it was not really safe, so we had to uh, make some uh, security, uh, we improved the security, so some doors and the windows were fixed because there were 50 windows which were out, which were not there anymore, so we had to replace 50 windows first. And now we have a field office so people can come and talk to us, we are really in the community and that's, that's beautiful. We have also projects in evangelism, and we have now our own pastor. Of course, Moses joins too, but we have also a full-time pastor. He's really very local. He's himself, he's, we went to geological school, so he has, he has a good knowledge and education, uh, background, educational background. But at the same time, he's so close to the people. He visits them at home. Um, there is a lot of pastoral care uh, because people have problems and they need to have help sometimes and there's nothing and then we pray with them. Every Wednesday we meet them for prayers. 
And it's beautiful to see because even the Muslims, they are joining in the same prayers and there is unity and oneness and that's beautiful that we can proclaim that one hope, which is Jesus Christ. We had also a um, court case going on because a man digged the road because of 10 years of annual floods, which were caused by a road which the government constructed, which was a tarmac road, and it was like about two meters or two meters or above two meters higher than the village. So when it was raining, the water was stuck behind the road. So we had, um, they were caught because they tried to dig the road out of desperation. Every year the house was washed away. Um, but with some legal help, we, um, we arranged for them. They won the case and the government finally, after 10 years, has started to construct a bridge. And as, as I'm speaking now, it's in the final stages. And that means that most likely the floods will be much and greatly reduced this coming rainy season, which is a miracle. And we are thankful that the government is doing it and that we're really working together and that these things are achieved. We have a, uh, also a project at the moment going on, which is with secondary school students. They were not able to go to school because of school fees, or maybe they lived two and a half to three hours walk from school. So they needed to relocate and move to a student's home. Um, we help them with that, and at the moment, we have some students in that program, around 30 students, and it is going very well. And it is beautiful to be have really like we give them, some of them, we give them counseling, and it's nice that we are, we know them personally. I know every student in the project, and that makes it beautiful because you can really help them in their lives and make a huge, huge change. So that's, in short, of course, there's so much more to say, and if you're coming this afternoon to Auken Anachin's house, you will hear much more about it, but this is, in short, what we have done in the one year, and we praise God that it was possible. And I so say thank you for so many of you who have supported our work through prayer or messages you have sent us through some financial support. It was amazing and we feel really loved by you all. What is then on our agenda? What are we gonna do next? Um, I've just shortly mentioned them. We continue to improve the roads in Polanya to really prevent the floods. Now the government did a big part, as also a part remaining for us as an organization. Um, we are building a nursery school um, in education will continue to encourage the children to go to school. There will come some after school, primary school clubs. And the, for secondary school, we are doing remedial teaching. We will continue with these kind of things. There is a need of at least one more borehole in one area. And when we're building schools, it would be amazing if every school could have their own borehole so that they can cook their food there and have water available. Um, and we will, of course, continue with evangelism. And the goal now is to give every household a Bible in their own language. Some of them cannot read, but in most households, there's at least maybe uh, someone from secondary school or from primary school who can read. So in that way, uh, they, yeah, they can may know the Bible. Some of them never own the Bible. And it's just beautiful if that would be possible. So that is what we are, we are planning to do. And we are praying that God will provide, and that he will give us the insight and all the means we need to do this. What can you do when you're sitting here? We will really encourage you to pray for us. God can move mountains, but we need, to, we need prayer. And we ask really to do that for us, for our work, for our organization, for us as a family, for God to continue working through us and using us for his glory. Um, if you say like, I want to do something more practical, we are searching for people to join our fundraising team and there are other volunteer option, uh, positions which need to be filled. So if you say like, oh, I have a skill, maybe as an organization can, you could maybe use it, or you can then, then approach us, because that's also very possible. Of course, it's always great if um, you could financially support us, and you can find some more details about it on the back of the flyer you've all received. If you did not receive it, you can still find it at the entry that's on the table, or you can approach me afterwards. Um, Another practical thing you can do, Pastor Jan and some more from the church are running a marathon, the Antwerp Night Marathon in September. So if you say like I'm a very uh, sporty person and uh, I can run, you can maybe you run like a quarter of a marathon, you can join. Or you say like, oh no, I, I would not like to run, but I would like to support. You can also approach Jan. He has uh, ways how you can support him for, uh, for running for one of Malawi. So that would be uh, 
would be amazing. There are some teams of going around for One Hope Malawi. So let's hope that God will bless it. And then we can physically feel that we're really running for people who are in need. It is on the 11th of September, the, the night uh, marathon. So if you want to do that, most welcome. Thank you for, uh, for this time. And may God bless you all.